Hello everyone, Paul from High Tech Legion, and guess what? After much debate, many phone calls, we finally got a manufacturer to send us a 290X. You probably all seen the video that I did on the AMD reference 290X where I said it was a failure. I also did mention that I was waiting for a manufacturer to come out with something that had aftermarket cooling so I could test it to see what they did with the R9 290X. Well, Sapphire has sent us one. We went ahead and tested it. So, what do you think I'm going to say about it? Is it a positive or is this another failure? So let's go ahead and take a look at the card first. Alright everyone, if you start hearing some clicking in the background, that's actually Bacino chewing on a bone. No matter what I do, he just does not want to stop and he has to chew it behind me. So, the clicks are Bacino chewing on the bone. Let's go ahead and we'll go over a couple of the specs first with the card and then I'll give you a closer look at it. On the GPU, it's set to 1030 megahertz on the core. It is a 28 nanometer chip and it has 2816 streaming processors. 4 gigabytes of memory, 512 bit GDDR5 memory, and it's set to an effective 5300 megahertz. Let's take a look at the shroud first. You'll notice that it is an anodized shroud. This is not plastic, it's an anodized shroud. It has the Tri-X cooling in front of it, which includes three 100 millimeter fans. The good thing about this is it's actually a little bit power saving. There is a power saving feature for this and it can be used by a switch on the back and we'll get that to that in a minute. But what I want to talk about is the vapor chamber cooling on this. I don't know if I could really give you a great look because technically I don't want to take this apart. But this has a vapor chamber cooler on it. It is very dense, it does displace a lot of heat, and it is very, very heavy. So, vapor chamber cooler, we have some nice heat pipes coming out of the back here, and it also, on the back, has a nice rigid plate for a cover, which also displaces a little bit more heat. So as we go around the car, let's take a look at it. It's PCI, PCIe Express, or PCI Express 3.0. On the front, we have outputs. We have two DVI outputs. We have an HDMI and a display port. On the back of the card, I'm going to show you this now. You'll see a switch that says on and off. The on off switch is for power saving mode. Now when I say power saving mode, I'm not talking it's going to save power, it's going to decrease the power. What it's going to do is, just say you don't want to hear too much noise. Even though I could tell you right now, and I will attest to this, this, this card is basically noiseless. If you don't want to hear any noise, when you turn the switch on, when the card is at idle and it's not being used, only the center fan will spin. Now, what it'll do is, you might end up getting a little bit higher temperatures at idle than if you had the three fans going but you are going to save a little bit of power by only running one fan. What I found is, now you remember I live in Florida, it is 92 degrees out, my idle temperatures were between 44 and 47 Celsius depending on if my air conditioner was running or not. So that's not that bad. Highest temps that I got was about 71 and that is even with the overclock of 13, of 1135, sorry. 1135 megahertz. So we'll continue to look at the card a little bit. I'll show you this side of the heat sinks. As you can see, very dense, very rigid, vapor chamber. And let's look at this part of the plate. As you can see, this is very dense here. This also displaces more heat, which is very good for this card. 
And of course, last but not least, we have our dual BIOS UEFI switch. So that's basically it for the card, except I forgot to mention that it does have two 8-pin power connectors on it. I'll be right back, and we'll go ahead and look at some benchmarks. Okay, everybody, Zeke here, and I want to talk to you and tell you a couple things before we get into the benchmarks. Because let me tell you about this car. This thing runs cool. It runs quiet. I threw everything I had on it on the bench. I overclocked it to 1135, whatever the hell you want to call them, megahertz or gigahertz or, or joules or whatever it is. But I threw everything I had on it and it stayed cool, it stayed quiet. The highest the fan went on auto was 40% and you couldn't hear a damn thing coming from it. But let me tell you something else before we even go through it. This thing does not throttle. Not one iota does it throttle. I will show you up in this graph right here. This is a whole run, a whole run after four loops, four loops of Unigen Heaven. And this thing is straight at 1135 with the overclock in a 71 degree temperature. All right, everyone. As you can see, we're running Unigen Heaven 4.0. We've got a 25 by 16 resolution on here. Also, we have extreme tessellation on. We have the highest quality. We also have it overclocked to 1135. And as you can see, our temperatures are 72 degrees Celsius. Our fan is up to 47%. GPU usage is 100%. And as you can see, it's also not throttling. It's been staying at 1135. There are a couple dips, and I'll explain those dips there. They're very small dips, and that's when Unigen changes phases. Between a few of the scenes, it actually doesn't use the GPU as much, so you will notice a specific dip in it. Even if you run this at home, you will notice it. So, technically, this is solid. It has not throttled at all, and even with the dips, it went down to 1137, so, I mean 1130, so these are not technically dips. These are just the changing of the scenes with Unigen. A total dip would be if it dropped down 100 megahertz, 150 megahertz, etc. So at 47%, 72 degrees Celsius, running Unigen, we're maintaining 1135 with an overclock. So now let's get on to these benchmarks. But before I get to that, let me tell you, everything was run at the highest settings at 25 2560 by 1600 resolutions and if it wasn't ultra it was very high if it wasn't FXAA it was 4X or 8X so these were the highest settings we could possibly run it and they creamed it baby Okay everyone, what I wanted to do was show you the, I guess you could say silent mode as, as Sapphire is calling it, let's call it power saving mode because yeah, you are saving some power by not running three fans at one time. But as you can see, the system is virtually quiet at this time. Not to say that with all three fannings running, it's not going to be quiet. I have everything set to auto. I have the switch turned to on, of course, which means that only one fan is running because it's under 50 degrees. So under 50 degrees Celsius, one fan, over 50 degrees, all three fans will start running. You'll also notice that there's a blue LED up top. The LED up top denotes temperature also. 
When it's blue, it's under the 50 degree range. When it turns yellow, it's from 50 to 80. When it's from 80 to and higher, of course, it will turn red. So I'm going to go ahead and activate Unigen and we'll go ahead and watch the two fans start spinning once it hits 50 degrees. And then I will do is I will take it out of auto. Right now we're at 20% fan speed and my, my idle temperatures are 44 degrees Celsius. Virtually inaudible. I'll keep my mouth shut for a couple seconds just so you could listen. Alright, now we'll go ahead and turn on Unigen and we'll get it cranked up so you can see the fans actually starting to run once it hits that threshold. And you'll notice that the Sapphire logo will then change to yellow. Okay, it hit 50 degrees Celsius threshold. The two fans turned on. Sapphire logo turned yellow. And now what I will do is I'll go ahead and do some fan adjustments for you so you could listen to the fans at different different speeds. Right now we're at 32 32% on the fans at present. So let's go ahead and bring this to manual. And I'll bring it up to 50. Click apply. And now we're at 50% fan speed. Next we'll bring it up to 75. And now finally 100. Okay, it's not even half as loud as the reference design AMD cooler. Of course, we're, it'll probably never get to 100%, but that's what you could expect at 100%. I'm going to go ahead and click it back to auto, click apply, and now we're running back at... 35% on the fan speed and our temperatures are 64 on the actual uh, board itself. Alright everyone, quite an impressive card. The vapor chamber heatsink does its job. It cools the R90 290X very well. Highest temperatures 71 degrees Celsius and that's with the overclock of 1135 megahertz. I really can't find any faults with this. It's very quiet. I, I've been, I found myself running it on the power saving mode even, even with the temperatures here in Florida being a little bit warmer because it is getting close to summer. You know to me between 44 and 50 degrees Celsius when it's running idle is fine and that's with minimal uh, with minimal fans inside of my case so that's pretty good and you know in the, in the long run you might save a little bit of power but if you want it to run a little bit cooler at idle just shut off the uh, power saver button on there and uh, it'll run all three fans and it's not going to be loud it's not loud at all uh, it's barely audible to the ear even outside of a case but my my thing about this is I like the fact that they actually have a nice back plate to support it because this is a fairly heavy heat sink and it does definitely need the back plate. Without this back plate this thing would be drooping all over the place. So thank God that uh, Sapphire did think about putting a back plate on this.
As for performance, everything that we tested it on, it performed above what I would call acceptable frame rates, which is 30 frames per second. And now remember, we were we were testing it at 2560 by 1600 resolutions. I didn't go with 1920 by 1080. We went with the highest resolution that we have. I didn't go with multiple monitors because due to the limited time frame that we had to review the card, I just didn't have that opportunity to test it with multiple monitors. But I am quite sure that with the four gigs of memory, multiple monitors aren't going to hurt this card at all. Of course, you're going to take a little bit more of a hit in performance because you're using multiple monitors and you're spreading, you're spreading the video out across. But I don't feel it'll take much of a hit at all. There will be enough bandwidth in this card to definitely... Uh, use some iFinity on it if that's what you choose to do. Sapphire also includes an HDMI cable with the card. You also have two Molex to PCIe connectors, driver disc. They are including a little mat here, a little mouse pad for you. And of course we have the owner's manual and quick install guide. Well, that's everything. I, I think Sapphire, even though it might have taken a little bit longer to get this model out, they did a tremendous job with their R&D to actually calm the beast, as I'd like to say, because we know how poorly the uh, thermals were on the reference board design. But with a little bit of good R&D, a little bit of good aftermarket market heat sinks, the vapor chamber. We're going to go ahead and give this an editor's choice award. This is one stunning card. And I want to say thank you for watching everybody. Have a great day. We'll see you the next time. Bye-bye.